Okay, let's talk about three things that drive math teachers crazy. So you might be interested in this video saying, oh, I definitely want to drive my math teacher crazy because my math teacher, uh, they drive me crazy with all their crazy math and you know they're trying to get me to learn this algebra stuff or whatever the case is. So yeah, I want to definitely drive my math teacher crazy. Well, this is not really the, the point of this video. Uh, it's really more towards highlighting uh, what math teachers are thinking when they're looking at your work, okay? And they might be saying, hmm, why are they doing this? And really you see uh, a lot of bad habits that are really, uh, you know, messing up the student's performance, okay? And sometimes the students just don't know and it just, it's frustrating. And I'm sure most math teachers would agree with this, uh, that, you know, teachers are constantly saying, do this, do this, do this, trying to reinforce kind of good habits. But you know, a lot of students are ignoring that. And then, of course, when they see the work and they're like, boy, I told my math students 10,000 times don't do this, uh, but they continue to do it, it kind of tends to drive uh, math teachers crazy. So I can't speak for all math teachers, but probably the good majority of math teachers would agree with me on this. And I'm going to get to these three specific things. There's a ton of other little things, but these are my three things that I think uh, the majority of math teachers would uh, possibly agree with me on. But um, again, the main idea of this video is for you, the student, to learn, okay, you know, about these three uh, things and improve them, okay? I want you to not do what I'm going to be getting into in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. Uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and I um, have many, many uh, courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, Alex exam, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe a nursing school entrance exam, and many, many other type of exams, guess what they all have? They have math. So, you know, clearly somebody out there thinks math is pretty uh, important. You got to know math. Yeah, you just can't escape it, uh, unfortunately, in life. You're going to have to know math to some degree, okay? So if you're studying for any of these exams and um, uh, maybe you're not sure if I have your exam, just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. If I don't, drop me a line on my contact form and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, have a great homeschool learning program, then obviously um, I help those here having a tough time in your current math uh, courses. Now, one thing, and this is not one of the points I'm going to make in this video, but one thing you need to be truly serious about if you want to really learn uh, math well is note-taking, okay? So this does drive math teachers crazy when they see uh, students not take notes, but this is not part of my little list here. You have to take great math notes. So I've been teaching math for decades. I could point to this with consistency over the years. Those students who take great math notes, I mean excellent, excellent math notes, almost always do very, very well. And the reverse is true. Those students who are more interested in their cell phone, okay, which I would have been back in the good old 1980s. I'm so happy those things weren't around. Well, we had cell phones, but they were like, you know, two feet tall and they weigh or they cost like $10,000. And, uh, you know, you couldn't text or anything else. Of course, none of my friends had them. I didn't have them. So, but listen, I get it. You know, cell phones are awesome and cool. And you could do, you know, there's, you know, you constantly want to be looking at them. But, you know, they're, you're kind of your worst enemy in uh, any math or any course you're taking because they're a distraction. You have to learn how to focus to be successful in anything you do. So try to put that cell phone away, focus on what the teacher is teaching, and the best way to do that is to be engaged in an activity that's going to help you do that, and that's note-taking. Okay, so improving your notes, things are going to get a lot better. Uh, but in the meantime, you can use my notes to study from. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so here we have our uh, Mr. Math teacher, and it looks like he's clearly being driven crazy by what? Well, let's get into my little three things here that drives math teachers uh, crazy. All right. Uh, first one is no work. Okay, this is a real common one. So let's say uh, we had a problem, I'm just making something up. Let's say it's just uh, some algebra course that, you know, a, a student's taking from a particular math teacher. And here is a, a lovely quadratic equation 
Now, to solve this equation is there's a pretty good amount of work involved, and I'm just going to make up some answers. Let's say x is 1 and x is negative 3. Let's say that's the solutions. I have no idea if it's a solution to this problem. I just made it up. But let's suppose... The teacher, okay, has this as either a homework problem or a test question, quiz question, and here is the question, and uh, the student just writes the answers down, okay? Now, you might be saying to yourself, that doesn't happen. Oh, yes, it does, okay? <laughs> it happens quite a bit, and oftentimes, it's those students that are pretty strong, you know, in math, and they're like, uh, yeah, I don't need to write this stuff down. Um, it's basically, you know, I'm doing this all in my brain, but here's the answers, and I know they're right, you know, and it's almost sometimes like a badge of honor, like, I don't need to show any work, I could do it all in my brain, here's the answers, please accept those answers and give me credit for that. Well, listen, most math teachers, this is extremely annoying, they're not, they, yes, they're interested in your answers, but really they're most interested in is the process, okay? Do you understand the process? Because this is what they're teaching you, okay? And you need to kind of show them, all right, provide evidence to support your answer, okay? This drives math teachers crazy when they see, especially a strong student, you know, write, you know, have the, um, you know, the question and just write the answers down with no supporting work. That's like almost like going into a, uh, let's say a jury, a court case, right? And you're defending this person. Let's say you're a lawyer, and this person right here, and you go to the jury and you say, uh, uh, you know, how does this, you know, how does your client plead? Oh, they're innocent. Okay. Well, do you have any evidence? No, no, no. They're just innocent. <laughs> they're like, well, if you don't have any evidence to support what you're saying, how can we even believe you? How do we even know? Okay. It's the same thing with math. You need evidence. I need evidence. I got to, I got to see the work, the supporting work. So I can conclude that one, in fact, you do know what you're doing. And two, you didn't look over at your buddy's paper and just copy some of my answers down. Okay. So this drives math teachers uh, crazy. And it's probably other teachers as well. But listen, you got to show your work. So if you're not showing work, um, start showing work. And by the way, uh, this counts for showing some work too. Okay, so let's say you just write like one or two steps and there's gaps, major gaps here. That's not good either. That's effectively not showing work. Okay, yes, you could just have the question and the answer. I've seen this many, 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 many times over the years. That does happen, but probably what's a little more frequent for sure is students just take big gaps where I'm like, I have no idea how you got to this point because I wasn't in your brain at the time you were doing that. So What's the uh, main point of this? Show your work, okay? When your teacher teaches you, okay, they're showing you step by step by step. You need to basically model what they're showing you back on these tests and quizzes and homework, okay? So the way you do your homework, all right, the way you're practicing your homework is the way you're going to do your quizzes, and it's going to be the way you're going to do your test, okay? So you're going to have to really, you know, uh, practice, um, good technique all the time. Do you know? Uh, anyways, I'm going to move on. Okay. I think you kind of get my point. Let's move on to our next one. You can see how much this is driving me crazy right now. I think I have a little bit of steam just going back and recollecting some of this stuff coming out of my ears, but let's move on to the second thing that drives math teachers crazy. And that is sloppy work. This was me way back in the good old 1980s. I was totally sloppy. So let's say um, here is the problem. I'm just making something up. Uh, and let's say it's like that, right? Now, here's what uh, you know I would do, or a lot of students would do. They would go like there, go like this, and something like that, and then. Uh, say, I mean, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of exaggerating a little bit, but you know, to be honest with you, I've seen things like, like, like this. And then X is four thirds and or like something like that. Right. So you're probably saying, oh, you're just making this up. No, I'm not making this up at all. Okay. <laughs> There's work here, but it's so sloppy. I have no idea what's going on. I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of trying to figure it out. Um, and then sometimes some students, sometimes most of the time, what I find for sloppy work is uh, oftentimes students write too small. So it's not only sloppy, but it's like super tiny small. It's like 2x minus 4, and it's kind of going off to the side, and it's kind of like this and this and this and this and this. And then in my brain, I'm kind of like, I'm like all over the place, right? So 
here's the thing. Uh, you might be showing work, but if it's so sloppy where you, you yourself can't read it, and a lot of students will be like, you know, I don't even know what I wrote. I would bring a student over and be like, hey, what is this right here? They'll be like, mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what I wrote. If you can relate to this, don't feel too bad because a lot of students are uh, sloppy. Okay, You're going to have to work on being neat. All right, and showing your uh, work. So if you are chronically sloppy, uh, again, don't feel bad. A lot of people are. What you need to do is one, use like get away from pen. If you're using pen, stop using pen. Okay, uh, that's the first thing. Use pencil and use paper, and make sure you're using like say college uh, uh, college ruled uh, um, paper. All right, use the lines. Okay, try to make your font go back to like the second grade where teachers are like, you know, teaching you how to, you know, uh, print and everything else like that. So you stay within the lines, two X plus three, use the lines here, increase your font so you can, and, and slow down. Okay. Slow down and take your time. And it's going to be difficult in the beginning as you are going from sloppy to neat, but it's going to pay off like by infinity. Okay. When you go from sloppy to neat, uh, even though you may not understand uh, the procedures and whatnot, you know, at least you're going to be able to see what's going on. That's the first, first step. Okay, so if you're sloppy, it's not going to work out for you, especially as you can progress into more advanced mathematics. But this drives math teachers crazy because they're like, here's a student, they're really trying hard, but they're just chronically sloppy. I can't help them, okay, improve. I can't be like, hey, I can just say, you got to become neater, um, Etc. So again, uh, don't feel bad if you are sloppy. However, you're going to have to do something about it. Don't remain sloppy. Okay. All right. Now uh, let's get to my last little thing that drives math teachers crazy, and that's blank answers on tests and quizzes. So uh, this happens quite frequently. You'd be really it does. Yes, it does. So here's a lovely uh, test. Let's say there's 20 questions on this test. Let's say a lot of them are multiple choice. Okay. Here's a B, C, D, here's number 14 um, on our lovely uh, test or, or final exam, whatever the case is. Listen, math teachers don't take any joy on wanting to fail you, okay, on a test. And oftentimes, if there's like a multiple choice uh, test, it, they're not going to judge you even if you guessed on it, okay? They kind of know who knows this stuff or not. They're like, okay, this student, they're not learning this, but listen, they took the time to just at least pick something, okay? <laughs> Remember, when you're taking a test or quiz, the name of the game is to get as many points as possible. That's the name of the game for you. Now, a teacher, of course, they want you to make sure, they want to validate that you know this stuff, but what drives uh, teachers crazy is that you didn't even fill out the question. You didn't even guess. Like, you didn't, you just turned in a blank. You're just like, okay, I give up. I'm like, you know, I can't do this. You know, I'm sad. You know, I'm like, listen, just, Give me something, okay? Go over there and just circle some stuff here. B, is that right? Hey, you know what? You actually got that right. So instead of having an F on this test, you actually got your grade up to a C minus, okay? So don't feel like guilty about guessing sometimes, right? You know, some teachers might disagree with this, uh, but I'm telling you right now, if there is a test or quiz or question that's multiple choice and you have, and you're not going to get penalized for taking a guess or writing something down do so. Okay. This drives me crazy. I'm like, come on, just do, just give me something. Cause you never know, you know, you have a 25% chance. I mean, four, you have A, B, C, D, you have a one in four chance of getting this thing right. That's pretty good odds. Okay. Uh, so it's not like it's, you know, uh, a one in 100 chance. Listen, uh, don't leave, uh, any answers, uh, blank on tests, especially multiple choice, uh, questions. Now, this goes back to, let's tie in the sloppiness and uh, showing no work, okay, with this blank answer. So let's say you attempt a problem, and this is where the big payoff comes from. So let's say here's problem number 14, but it's not multiple choice, and uh, here's the problem, and you don't really know, but you're showing me some work. You're like, okay, I think I need to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm showing you what I do know, da, 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 and you get the wrong answer, okay? I'm going to tell you right now, if you're showing me some level of understanding, okay, about some stuff on this particular thing, I am going to give you partial credit, all right? I'm going to encourage you uh, for the next time out to to tr attempt the problem. Math is a process, okay? You know, it's um, 
you know, it's like trial by fire. You're going to have to do a lot of problems wrong until you learn how to do things right, and then you'll get better. But if you don't even try, okay, you're not going to be able to improve. So partial credit is a real thing, okay? Now, you don't get partial credit on multiple choice questions, but of course you can guess. But here, if you're structured neat and you're showing me a few little things, and let's say this question was worth 10 points, okay, I might give you two out of 10, even if your answer was totally like wrong and you're like, okay, no, no, you're on a, off on the right track, but you showed me kind of something, I might give you two out of 10. This is, could be the difference between a D and an F, okay, or a C and a D, okay, or B and an A. I'm telling you right now, uh, these are things, you know, that I'm uh, giving you from decades and decades of experience. I think I've probably graded 100 million different math test quizzes and stuff. Maybe not that many, okay? But a lot. You get the idea, right? So you see the same trends over and over again. And most uh, teachers are going to give you partial credit, okay? Some are really, you know, like, nope, there's no credit at all. But most are going to give you some level of partial credit. All right, so three things that drive math teachers crazy. The whole point is not for you to be like, okay, I'm going to get revenge on my math teacher. I'm going to drive them crazy by, you know, not showing any work, uh, being super sloppy, and uh, just turning in my uh, test blank. That's not the idea, right? The idea is to get you to be successful in mathematics. Remember your math teacher, they're, they're already kind of set, they're teaching, you know, they have their career, they're doing their thing. This is all about you. Okay, so if this video was entertaining to some small degree or, you know, useful, beneficial, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over 1,000 plus videos on my channel, uh, basic to advanced mathematics. So please take uh, advantage of those. Those are there for you. If you like my teaching style, you know, I have a lot of material there that you can learn from. Um, now, one thing I will say, my best math help will be within my math help program, but get math help. If you're struggling in math, do something about it, okay? Start with the basics, okay? Start improving, like some of the things I talked about in this video. Start improving your notes. Get with your math teacher. Start working towards it, but no one should be failing math these days, okay? I'm telling you right now, 99.99999% of people can not only pass math, but do very, very well. Some of you are going to have to work harder than others, but that's okay, okay? But the bottom line is that you have the potential to do great in math. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.